So here's the crazy linkage. Um, it looks a little nuts, but um, it does allow you to use one servo, which is nice on the expense, and it does work really well, actually, despite the looks. Um, so basically what I did is took that piano wire, that um, about a sixteenth inch, and I did a 90 degree bend from the uh, servo horn out until this trough, about centered. I bent 90 degree down, and then 90 degrees this direction, and actually bent it a little bit if you can see it's not at a perfect 90 degree this way and that helps when you're pushing or when the servo is pushing this direction to uh, give it better uh, better response then another 90 degree and yet one more now um, I did that on both sides and I tried to do this the cheap way there is another way to do it where you can uh, you know you could have left this straight and had um, a little um, a little easy connector here so that you could have left that straight and adjusted it. That is nicer for adjusting. That's a special or part though that you'd have to wait online for and I was trying to do this with cheap stuff that you could just find locally. But if you have a hobby shop I would suggest the easy connectors. It makes it easier to adjust. The way I adjust these to make sure they're centered and all that stuff is by um, messing with this bend. I'll open up the 90 degree bend a little bit and that'll push it a little further down. So I tweak these back and forth until I get the um, the aileron centered. Now to hold them on again, I was just using cheapo stuff. This is actually aquarium tubing. I um, cut a little chunk off of an aquarium tube and pushed it on the end. You could even use, if you find like a thick rubber band like this, and cut little sections on them and jam them on there. Did the same thing underneath the edge of the servo horn. Again, just for cheap factor. I've actually crashed a plane just like this using that method of holding the linkage on. A whole bunch of times I've never had the linkage pop off, not even once. I did a nose down crash from about 50 feet in the air, so uh, I think it holds all right. <laughs> and then uh, as far as the linkage for the tail and rudder, um, the first one here, this is for the, uh, the rudder. Um, and uh, basically what I did is did a little 90 degree bend to go into the rudder. And then uh, measured until, you know, just went over until it was about centered with that channel, bent down and then over again. And I did the same type of thing where I didn't quite do full 90 here, um, and that helps when it's pushing to do a little better on the um, tension. And then you end up just sticking that in here. Um, see if I can do this one-handed while staring at the camera. Um, and you drop it in there, put the aquarium tubing in there again on the on the little edge, bottom edge of that. And then um, you cut it so that it travels about to the center a little better. Now for the rudder, it's real easy. Or for the elevator, it's real easy. You just do a 90 degree bend and a whole long piece. And again, that goes in the bottom here. And you cut it off so that when it's inside, it goes a little bit, a little bit past that center opening. Let's see if I can get this in there. Um, so you end up with two sticks going in there, and I'll show you what to do with the servos in a bit. I'm going to go ahead and get all that connected up. And um, and show I'm gonna take a second to talk about the electronics before going any further. Uh, a lot of this is salvaged, but I'll go over it and tell you where you can get comparable parts. This one I actually uh, did recently buy from uh, Heads Up RC. You can also get the same style of motor from um, what you might call it, Hobby King. It's a CF2812. Um, the 2812 is the important number. If you find that um, by a different company, that's fine. This is Emacs. A pretty powerful little motor. I like that it has an integral mount. And this mount has set screws. I loosened them and you can just pull this off. Uh, you can kind of see it wiggling around. And then you can uh, attach the base on and, you know, it makes life easy. You'll want to get a prop saver. If you can see this little silver doohickey with the two screws on either side. About a couple bucks. The motor's probably $8. Uh, and then a prop. The prop is an 8x4 prop. This is a little bit much. It recommends up to 7 inch props. Uh, but the uh, performance is like night and day between a 7x4 and an 8x4. I've tried both. I uh, highly recommend the 8x4 and this thing seems to just barely run warm with it so it's not a big deal. seems to handle it fine. Worst case you burn it up, another $8 later, you're saved, you're good. 
Um, you'll need a 3.9 gram servos, there's one already in there, and it doesn't really matter here. Again, you can get something like the HXT 900s from a, a Hobby King. It doesn't have to be anything special. You don't need metal gear. You can if you want, but um, the $2 servos will, will do. And then um, as far as the speed control, um, I've just got a little old E-Flight one that I had handy, but anything 20 amp or better, 20, 25 amp would be uh, perfect. This thing only draws, I think, between 15 and 17 amps. Uh, so that would be a great little complement to that motor. As far as a um, receiver system, I went with FlySky. I've had this little TH9X, uh, which is the exact same remote as the um, Turnigy 9X. And they're great little systems. If you want to go a little cheaper than that, that one's about 90. The Turnigy is the same thing for about 60. It's just gray. Uh, if you want to go even cheaper, you can get the FlySky CT6B. Uh, at like nitroplanes.com, it comes with one of these little receivers for about 30 bucks. And when you're ready, you can buy that remote. This receiver will work with that remote. Uh, that's it for the electronics for now. I'll go ahead and get them installed and show you how things. So here the up. servos are. I just uh, hot, gl hot glued them in there about the center, and then the little bars are going through the Easy Connects, and I'll show you how to do those in a second. Put the receiver in the middle there. Um, what I would like to give you a little tip when you're connecting. Uh, you know, I mounted the motor. Uh, when you're connecting up your speed control, like my wire nuts instead of regular connectors, you can use those in a pinch. Um, go ahead and uh, connect the wires while it's outside and test it to make sure the motor's turning the right way. Because it's a little hard um, to reach in from this direction to try to undo those wire nuts. I actually do this from the outside and then shove the whole speed control assembly right through that little air vent hole. Uh, so just a tip. All right, there. so here we are on the inside. Um, you'll see the receiver there. I put uh, velcro on the bottom there and a little strip down the middle. Taped the antenna with that little slack and on purpose so I could pick the uh, pick it up out of there. Now those little doodads you can see on the servo tops those are called easy connectors and I decided to demo those. They're not necessary but they make life a lot easier. You stick the bar through um, and then you turn on your receiver and flatten out your elevator and your rudder. I usually tape a little block to it like this um, so that it's perfectly flat and then you screw in um, the little screw and it, it holds it right where it's supposed to be. So I did that for both the rudder and the elevator. Um, and then um, I put the battery in there with some velcro and you experiment with this for the center of gravity. After I found the center of gravity where I wanted it, I put some foam on either side of it, some velcro in there. Um, and I'll show you how to do this. That basically the battery, my battery is a small, um, it's a three cell LiPo that's 1200 milliamp. It's pretty small. It's only uh, like 70 centimeters wide, or 70 millimeters um, in length. But I'll show you kind of uh, this thing put together and how to figure out the center. There guide. she is all put together. You can see we got a little aileron movement there. Got the elevator. Got your rudder. And got a little little power going. So uh, a couple things that I didn't uh, show in the video there is how to put these little cross members in. I basically measured three quarters of an inch from that little brace deal, um, and then a half inch down from the top on all edges, and drew a little dot. That's a uh, I think it's a three sixteenths dowel. Doesn't matter what size. Again, those things are like fifty nine cents from Home Depot. So, uh, or, or you can get them at Michael's or any craft store, hobby stores. Um, and then you just use rat or rans to strap it on. I usually use two across and then on the ends too, I just don't have them on now. Um, the other thing I didn't show you is I glued some popsicle sticks uh, on the bottom for skid plates so that when you land, I'm not going to put any landing gear on there. You could if you wanted, but um, those will be skid plates for if you land on concrete. Um, and the prop saver is really important with this because uh, the prop does not clear the ground, of course. So if you don't have a prop saver and your prop happens to line up vertically, uh, you stand a good chance of breaking your prop, whereas with this it'll just fold over and then you fold it right back up. Uh, never broken a prop that way. So, And then on here, to, to find the CG, you uh, make a mark uh, an inch and three sixteenths from the leading edge, and then another mark um, an inch and nine sixteenths from the leading edge. Um, and what we're going to do is sit there and fiddle with the uh, battery placement in the nose until you can put your finger on either side um, and it'll balance right there. I'll show you how this looks when I go ahead and uh, set the okay, camera Okay, so I'm going to just show you real quick that you just you put your finger in between the mark on both sides 
and then try to balance it and if it seems pretty level like this one is then you got it right. If it wants to tilt forward a little too much you move the battery back a teeny bit. If, it want, if it's really tail heavy and it's going like that you move the, the battery forward a bit. Um, if anything you want to lean toward a teeny bit nose heavy over tail heavy because this thing's really finicky when it's tail heavy as most planes are. Um, so uh, that's the basics on this Piper Cub. I'll go ahead and uh, put some little finishing touches on it and we'll take it up for uh, a couple things I forgot to mention. These little notches here I basically cut about three inches back and then an inch wide there. That matches up with this gap so that the linkage can get out to the outside of the body. When you're gathering the parts it wouldn't be a bad idea to snag a little servo extension wire uh, so you don't have to constantly disconnect the wing uh, every time you take it off. Um, as far as connecting your battery to your ESC, I've got kind of a weird setup. The ESC has the typical Deans and a lot of the ESCs that you buy uh, won't have a connector so you have to buy one. Uh, my battery had a JST connector so I ended up switching it over to Deans this way. Um, but anyway, you don't have to do that. I just wanted to um, mention that you should probably get some sort of connectors and make sure they coordinate. The other thing is you saw, I don't know if you can see in there now, but um, the way I connected the motor to the ESC wasn't exactly traditional. I used wire nuts. Um, it would be better to get some bullet connectors like 2.5 millimeter to 3 millimeter. Um, but yeah, feel free to pick those up when you're shopping at Hobby King or wherever you go. I'll go ahead and add some finishing touches and we'll take this thing up on its maiden, maiden All right, flight. So here we go with the maiden flight of the Piper Cub. Strong headwind. Speed and do the slow flyby. <laughs> 